All right. Well, uh, hello, Andy. Hello, Joshua. All right. So I'm here with uh, Andy Kind, uh, who is, we're very excited about having him at our church. He's going to be doing, I don't know if to, is it best to call it a show or a performance or... Uh, so, yeah, it's a, sh in, it's a show. Okay. In which I will be performing. Um, okay, but yeah, well, it, it's a, it's we've a nailed that. Yeah, we nailed it. It's a show, I think, yeah. 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 Because that... Yeah, okay, that's a, the first question. A multitude question. of things, doesn't it? There you go. We cleared that up. Uh, okay, next question. Um, and this is something I've been thinking a lot about in, in having you um, down here. Sort of a theological issue I've been wrestling with that maybe we could share with um, the people. Uh, in, in your opinion, do you think ginger-haired people should be allowed into heaven? It's such a good question, and I, I won't pretend I haven't thought about this a lot. Um, <laughs> It dep I think it depends how much shade there is yeah. in heaven, doesn't it? Obviously, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think there. I think there are much, uh, much worse people groups. Um, yeah, estate agents. Okay. Um, mm. uh, and that's it. Yeah. So yeah, or, or people who do um, market research on the street. Yeah. The, yeah, there's a big question mark about that. Yeah, for for me, it's not about hair color. I think yeah. you know, all are welcome. It's 2019 after all. But what I won't accept is somebody on the street trying to get me to answer questions from a clipboard. Sure. I mean, if I wanted to buy a kitchen, mm -hmm. if I wanted to buy a kitchen, I would go to somebody who is able to stand indoors. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if I want to buy something that's already indoors, mm -hmm. such as a kitchen, yeah. why am I supposed to trust somebody who is actually outside? <laughs> exactly. You've got no, I'm sorry, you've got nothing. All right. So, I, and I think Isaiah would have made the same point. In, um, well, I'm quoting from Isaiah. Yeah. Yeah. I'm quoting from the earlier. Um, Everyone goes to 53 and 61, don't they? But, you know, those, the teens of Isaiah. inclusivity has its limits, folks. And now we know where they, they stand. Yeah. Um, you recently, uh, I was listening to a podcast you were in. Um, you were, I think you were talking about evangelism. Mm -hmm. um, and you make... You, your journey is one from, you, you've been uh, a stand-up comedian for some time, is that right? 15 years, yeah. 15 years. And you're only more recently going into preaching. That's right. Okay, so it, my journey is, my, my only experience in stand-up was in middle school. Right. When there was an, uh, like an open mic show, and I wanted to be the comedian. So everyone else was right. dancing, singing. And so I got to be the stand-up. So I had five minutes. Yeah, sure. My, that's all I got on my CV, five minutes as, as a stand-up guy. Uh, doing, the rest of my life, though, since the age of 15 onward, I've been preaching. Yeah. But it, it was interesting in the interview, you talked about, uh, you were discussing the difference between the two. Yes. And I found that fascinating because for a lot of my life, I've, I've given a lot of attention to stand-up, uh, to comedians, and looked for similarities. Mm -hmm between the two. And I thought maybe we could um, talk about that, that sure. what, what can preachers learn from uh, comedians, from stand-up, yeah. as well as what are, what are the differences there? And yeah. In what, what, what ways are they very distinct? Yeah, so I think I said on this, on this podcast, the pep talk podcast, I think it was, yeah. um, that I think the skill set for comedy and preaching is very similar. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the reasons that I preach a lot, and I'm invited to preach a lot mm -hmm. um is because i know how to be on stage and i know mm -hmm. how to people when churches invite me to preach the very least that they know is that no one's going to get bored mm -hmm. um because there's just skills um and techniques not always conscious ones just mm -hmm. yeah you know th there's a discernment that you pick up from 15 years of being on on stage, stage. in terms of how to react to the audience and yeah. you know when people need a break when people need a change of tone or yeah. a change of um, content so I would say the skill set is very similar um, and I would say that the first thing preaching needs to do not the last thing but the first thing preaching needs to do is to captivate and mm -hmm. obviously as a comedian as a comedian you've got you've got 30 seconds between 30 yes. seconds and two minutes to get them mm -hmm. um, if you don't get them within the first two minutes you probably won't yeah but particularly I mean I'm doing a show tonight for you which mm -hmm. is you know 90 minutes long so I've probably got a bit more time yeah to win them back but if you're doing a sort of half hour if you're doing a half hour comedy show mm -hmm. in a comedy club yeah well you've got you've got two minutes yeah um 
so I think that ability to, to grab people is, is important. But the character of a, a stand-up is different to the character of a, of a preacher. Um, comedy is self-elevating, so it has to be about me. You know, the yeah. posters have got me on it. Yeah. Um, but I'm not in the Bible. <laughs> there is a guy named Andrew. There is a, and, and, close. and he leads, you know, he leads Peter to the Lord. So that's a But big, you're not the same one. It's not the same one, okay. no. I know mm. it's not it's not me. Um it would have been great. It's a it's a good model to follow for someone called Andrew, but um as a as a preacher you want to um elevate Jesus mm -hmm. and, and and you know, the good news, the gospel. So preaching is self denying. And I think one of the things I've learned over the last three years of, of preaching is that you've got to somehow when you're preaching get out of the way mm -hmm. to let the message come through yeah and there's a reason when you're preaching why it's you you're the one they've asked to preach so mm -hmm. you don't want to you know self-flagellate or self-denigrate mm -hmm. you, you don't need to feel you know totally um pathetic at, at all but you just there's a humility that you need which actually can be unhelpful in comedy. Yeah. I don't want to come across as too humble when I'm doing a mm -hmm. comedy show because I'm I'm not really there to make mm -hmm. friends or to impress people with my character. I'm there to entertain yeah. first and foremost. Uh, so, yeah, I would say the skill set very similar for preaching and comedy, but a totally different um, character. So what I've noticed is, uh, first of all, what you say about the skill set. So when I started preaching... Um, well, I started at 15, but then in my early 20s, I started getting more invitations to things than just youth groups. I started speaking in churches. And I noticed in a lot of churches, particularly here in the UK, there's there's not a lot of young men in churches. Mm -hmm. Like there's this age gap, but sort of between 16 and 30. Yeah. Whereas for whatever, it's not that way all around the world. Mm -hmm. There are other countries where young men are packed in the church. Mm -hmm. But here in the UK, uh, and maybe uh, to, not quite the same, but a similar extent, maybe in North America too. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a lack of young men, but, uh, and I, and what I was told was that, well, young men have very short attention spans. You know, that, that's the thing. The reason they don't like going to church and listening to preachers, they have short attention spans. Yeah. But when I go to the comedy clubs, when I see Mac, Michael McIntyre, when, uh, there's a lot of young men there yeah. and they're paying money to sit there for an hour or more that's right. to listen to a guy stand up and talk. And so, uh, I went to the comedian's to to learn about preaching i was like well i looked at their style the way they moved the way they spoke and be like right if i can get up and talk about jesus yeah the way they talk about jokes yeah i i can learn something there but it's it's not just the skill the, the other thing that i think comedians do well that preachers can learn from is uh i i think comedians it may, it may depend on the ones some more than others humor is based on um inconsistencies that's right it's, you know, what, what are we laughing at? What makes us laugh? Well, it's the difference between what is expected and what is delivered, yeah. what, what is said and what is done. And there's nothing funnier than human hypocrisy. That's right, yeah. You know, we're supposed to be one thing, but we're not. And, and probably many of the things Jesus said and the prophet said, though it doesn't translate well from the original language, yeah. it's probably meant to be funny. You strain at a gnat, but swallow a camel, yeah, you know. It, yeah. um, and it's this these shocking images between what should be and what's not. And, and a lot of times comedians, I think, get away with saying things, maybe some politically incorrect things that preachers would be afraid to say. Yeah. And a lot of times when people are laughing at these inconsistencies, they're, they're laughing at themselves. Mm, yeah, that's right. And their own weaknesses. Um, and I think there's a way for, and I've stolen, there's many times I've heard a joke in a comedian and adjusted it a bit and used it in a sermon. Um, yeah. And uh, in order to drive home a point yeah, about right. people's sin. Yeah. Um, and, I think, and I think that's um, at least an area of overlap. Yeah, I think what's interesting is that um, a joke is just a surprise. So we mm -hmm. laugh. Yeah. Laughter is just a release of tension. Yeah. And you, you, you laugh. Mm -hmm. The tension is released as you're surprised. So the punchline yeah. is the big surprise. Um, so in that respect, um, there's a similarity as well because... The, talk, the show tonight is called Hidden in Plain Sight. Yeah. And all jokes, to a degree, are hidden in plain sight. As a comedian, you want to try and hide the punchline mm -hmm. for as long as possible to right at the end yeah. of the joke. And that's when they yeah. get it. And, uh, you know, the gospel, the good news, 
is also, I think, hidden in plain sight to a degree. Yeah. Um, in in that, you know, the the Christian story is the only story that makes sense of the deep longings and yearnings of, of, of the heart yeah. uh, and, and the soul. But also, there's a lot of other claims out there on our identity. Yeah. And one of the things that I find frustrating about the Lord is that um, he will, you know, the message is there. The good news is wired into the universe. God's yeah. story is wired into the cosmos. But within that, there's also the opportunity to, as, as Blaise Pascal said, you know, he, there's enough light for those who are looking for it and enough darkness to blind those who, who aren't. Mm -hmm. So God's not, God's not hiding, but he is hidden. And I think there's, that's one of the, the weird kind of mm. juxtapositions of, of, of the gospel, that yeah. if you don't want to find Jesus, you won't. Mm -hmm. um, in, obviously, in some cases where he decides by his sovereign will to re yeah. reveal himself. But I think generally speaking, you know, you right. seek and you seek will find. Exactly what I was about to say. Seek and you'll find. Um, knock and the door will be opened. Yeah. But equally, uh, you do, there is a degree to which you do, have to, you do have to search for it. So Tozer said, someone can't find God unless God first draws them. So mm. obviously I agree with Tozer because it would be foolish to disagree, <laughs> disagree, with, Tozer. <laughs> to disagree with Tozer. But you know what I mean? There's that, there's that yeah. the good news is, is shrouded mm. in other things yeah. in, in the same way that, you know, the gospel's only ever heard around against the backdrop of the society that we're, that we're yeah. raised in. So for me being raised in a very kind of middle class mm -hmm. family, um, great family, morally upright, mm -hmm. you know, generous, hospitable, mm -hmm. loving. But some of the stuff that my little microcosm of society taught me yeah. wasn't the good news. It wasn't biblical Christianity. So part of my journey has been having to unpick from the gospel those things that weren't actually yeah. helpful. And from you, for you being from the States, there's obviously yeah. other things there that you've mm -hmm. had to yeah you know remove so yeah. that she were left with the pure gospel indeed yeah yeah very much so all right uh thank you guys um well, andy we're really looking forward to your show tonight and thank you guys for joining in and listening in on our conversation i'm excited all right bye-bye